Okay, I think we'll get started and as folks trickle in, they can join for whatever they hear. Uh, just another thank you again to Hillary for the land acknowledgement. And I want to say hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nana. I am a second year student and the summer and school year program coordinator for Pro Bono Students Canada, or PBSC for short. I'm delighted to be working alongside Malik Mate, a third year student who served as a program coordinator last year and will continue to co-coordinate co with me during the fall. Malik is currently a summer student at Blake's and will be articling there after graduation. Before I introduce our first guest speaker, I'd like to tell you a little bit about PBSC and what you can expect. We're a national pro bono organization with chapters at 22 law schools across the country. We are the largest pro bono organization in Canada. Our mission is to provide free legal support to people and communities facing barriers to justice. Through our unique projects and partnerships, we cultivate future leaders to tackle pressing social justice issues while being guided by our core values of dignity, equity, and humility. Volunteering with PBSC is a great way for students to give back, make a meaningful impact in improving access to justice, develop, develop practical legal research, writing, presentation, and client interviewing skills, depending on the project, form or deepen bonds with other students, expand their networks, and build their resumes. The commitment is relatively low as students are not expected to volunteer more than three to five hours per week from mid-October to March. We hold December and April as blackout periods on projects so that students can focus on exams. Finally, we owe our success to our volunteers and the generous support of our sponsors. I'd like to formally thank our sponsors, the Alberta Law Foundation, the Law Foundation of Ontario, our research partners, Westlaw Next, and Thompson Routers the University of Calgary and Dean Holloway, the University of Toronto for housing PBSC's national office, and our national law firm partner, McCarthy Tetrault. Our chapter holds a special relationship with McCarthy Tetrault, and it's my pleasure to introduce our first guest speaker, Riley Thackeray, who will shed some light on that relationship and her involvement with PBSC. Riley recently graduated from the University of Calgary Faculty of Law and served as our chapter's program coordinator for the 2021-22 term. Riley showed exceptional leadership, leading our chapter during and coming out of the pandemic. Alongside her PBSC role, Riley served as, as an executive member of the Environmental Law Society, hosting various panels on natural resource law. She aspires to pursue a career in energy law. In her spare time, Riley loves backcountry skiing, mountain biking, and running. With that, I turn it over to you, Riley. Thanks, Nana. It's really great to be here today. Um, yeah, so my name's Riley. I am a recent graduate of U of C Law. It's hard to believe that uh, I'm already in this position. It flew by. And in a few short weeks, I will be starting my articles at McCarthy Tetro. Um, and as Nana said, I was the program coordinator in 2021. And it's really great to see uh, the projects move back in person from being online. Um, and so I just wanted to quickly touch on the relationship between McCarthy Tetro and PBSC. So as mentioned, uh, McCarthy Tetro is PBSC's national firm sponsor. So the firm is heavily involved in the chapters across the country, but I think we're particularly lucky in Calgary with our strong connection with the firm. So you'll see that a number of uh, supervising lawyers are from McCarthy Tetro, um, and there's a project that is fully supported from the firm. Uh, and they're a huge support with all the events that will be happening this year with PBSC. So I wanted to highlight a few reasons why I think all of you should join uh, PBSC and why I think it's an amazing opportunity. And they've kind of been touched on already, but having been involved with PBSC for a few years now, I really think these uh, few things are really solidified as to why I believe that PBSC is such an incredible organization to get involved with. So the first reason is, I think coming into law school, being a law student and eventually being a lawyer, it's a position of privilege. And starting out in law school, when you're able to reflect on that privilege, uh, you're able to think about the ways that you can use that privilege for good. And PBSC is one of the areas where you're able to support your community and give back. The second is that PBSC is designed to work with your schedule. So the, your schooling is the top priority. And for me, PBSC was always 
the draw because I knew I would never be drowning in pro bono work. It was a really great balance between um, school, biking, running, making friends, all of it. Um, and I was still really able to get a lot out of uh, my involvement with Pro Bono Students Canada, but just rest assured you won't be drowning in pro bono work. The third reason is that there is something for everyone. There's a diversity in projects across the board. And I, what I love is that students can think about whether or not there's a skill that they want to improve on. So perhaps it's public speaking. So the consent project speaking to high school students could be an awesome opportunity to build those skills. Or maybe there's a specific area of the law that you're interested in. So you might apply to the hearsay podcast where you can research and invite an expert in the area on to learn about that area. And if you're a French speaker, I cannot recommend enough the French projects to get involved with the French legal community and familiarize yourself with um, French legal terms. It will be bar none. Um, and fourthly, having been involved in recruitment processes and interviews, um, having Pro Bono Students Canada on your resume is really important and it really benefits you because it demonstrates um, your interests and passions outside of school and also really shows that you are passionate and involved in the community and interested in social betterment. And finally, I just wanted to note that you really have the most incredible team at PBSC there to support you from Malik and Nana, the executive team and the project leads. Um, you just have an amazing team behind you. So I'm really looking forward to the impact that you all have with the projects this year. And if you ever need to reach out with questions, I'm always available. So I'll pass it back to you, Nana. Thank you very much, Riley. And as Riley touched on each year, our chapter runs over 15 unique pro projects. And I've invited a few of the project leads to speak briefly about their projects and their involvement with PBSC. We'll start with Andy Thiessen, our project lead for the TransID Clinic. All right, awesome. Thanks, Nona. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Andy. I'm the project lead for the Trans ID Clinic through PBSC. Uh, the Trans ID Clinic, we run in partnership with Skipping Stones Calgary, which is an organization that provides um, a lot of different services to transgender people in particular and kind of queer people more generally in the Calgary area. Um, I joined this project last year as a first year student, and this year I'm running it, uh, well, helping to run it um, as a project lead. Um, the reasons that I decided to join um, PBSC are kind of the same reasons I decided to go to law school in the first place. Um, I struggled with the decision for a while because I have some, let's call them deep critiques of the legal system as it currently exists and kind of the in inequalities that we see within it. But I ultimately decided to go to law school because it would allow me to both help people who need it the most, um, who really don't otherwise have access to resources to navigate that system, and allow me to support the work of people who are doing really important work to change things and make lives better for everyone, um, for all of these different groups that really, really need help. Um, to kind of put it in a corny way, um, I wanted to become a lawyer to help people, basically. And the great thing about PBSC is that you don't have to wait until you're actually a lawyer to be able to do that kind of work. You're able to, from your first semester of your first year, start working on all of these projects to actually really help people in the community who really need it or work on, as the other project lead will talk about, all of these different efforts to improve things in society. Um, so that's why I decided to join PBSC in general. Um, the Trans ID Clinic in particular is very near and dear to me. Um, I'm trans myself, I'm non-binary. I went through the process of changing my legal name a few years ago and it was, let's just call it a massive pain. It was very confusing, very expensive. But, um, it was not an easy process. And one of the major things that the Trans ID Clinic does is it helps um, with Skipping Stones. Skipping Stones every month hosts an event where trans folks can basically come in to get help filling out all the paperwork they need to change their legal name and gender marker. And like I said, that process is extremely difficult to understand if you don't have a good understanding of what government expects and all of these different things dealing with that process. So I went through it by myself. And I managed to figure everything out and get everything done, but it was really, really challenging. And so I was really, really excited to join this project so that I could take that experience that I have and use it to help other people who are kind of struggling in that same situation. Um, the Trans ID Clinic the, helps out Skipping Stones with those monthly events um, and also involves the services of notaries who we work with who 
um, sign all of those documents, name change documents, all that stuff, and take at least one of the expensive steps out. There's still a whole bunch of others, but there's only so much you can do about that. The other thing the Trans ID Clinic does is Skipping Stones gets a lot of other questions from it their clients about all kinds of different things related to trans and queer rights, um, things like housing, um, navigating the prison system, dealing with um, obviously legal name changes, anything related to um, rights around bathroom usage, name change, access to healthcare, all that kind of thing. And Skipping Stones often doesn't have the knowledge to answer some of the more in-depth questions. So what we do is we actually get a list of questions from Skipping Stones and we research and write a legal memo answering those questions and then pass it along to the folks who partner with PBSC, the actual lawyers who read it over make sure it's all good. And then they send it along to Skipping Stones so that they can take that information and use that to help their clients. Um, so yeah, this project, like I said, really near and dear to me in particular, but all of the projects at PBSC are doing really important work in helping people who uh, really need the help in the community or else helping educate people in all kinds of legal matters. So yeah, that's the Trans ID Clinic. Um, next, I'm going to pass it along to Tristan, who is the project lead for the Consent Project. Amazing. Thanks so much, Andy. Uh, my name is Tristan Bray. I am now a 3L, and that sounds terrifying to say because it goes so fast. It does not seem that long ago when I was on a Zoom call exactly like this, being introduced to PBSC. <clears throat> I, uh, I volunteered with PBSC because I, I wanted to, to be involved and I wanted to, to give back a little bit to, to the law school community uh, before inevitably becoming some sort of corporate lawyer. Uh, and I think PBSC provides, you know, incredible opportunities to get engaged in, in so many different projects. Um, the consent project that I uh, am one of the project leads, what we do is we go into high school and junior high classrooms and we present on consent, sexual assault, sexual violence, uh, sexting, and how these things interact with the criminal code. And I think it's an incredibly important project uh, because we need to be having discussions around consent in society and those discussions need to be happening in our primary education system. Uh, it's an incredibly rewarding project uh, because you're going into classrooms, into schools, you're interacting with teachers, and you're interacting, of course, directly with, uh, it's, it's grade 8 to grade 12 uh, students here in Calgary. Um, so every year we try and hit as many classrooms as, as we can. We have a, a great presentation that, that covers everything. And of course we work with our, our lawyer supervisor uh, to make sure that we're up to date as volunteers with uh, any developments in the criminal code, in sexual assault, in sexual violence, that sort of thing. Um, definitely if you wanna work on your, your public speaking, if you're, you're interested in, in consent and raising awareness, I think, uh, I think this project is, is great. This will be my third year uh, volunteering on the project, obviously now in a leadership capacity, and uh, I wouldn't have done it any other way. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully working with quite a few of you in the fall. So thank you. And now I'll pass it on to Colton. Awesome, thank you, Tristan. Uh, so my name is Colton. I'm a incoming 2L student, uh, and I'm gonna be the project lead for the King, uh, King's Bench Amicus Pro, uh, Project. Uh, next year. Uh, I initially joined PBSC for reasons that are not too uh, different from what, what has been mentioned, uh, to help increase access to justice, give back to the community, and uh, also just to increase my knowledge of the law as well, uh, and learn as much as I can. And uh, I was able to do that last year through joining the uh, Civil Claims Duty Council project, uh, and then I've actually continued volunteering with them uh, throughout the summer. Um, we actually do that project and the King's Bench Amicus project uh, alongside Pro Bono Law Alberta. Uh, so yeah, I've been, I've been uh, working with them every Wednesday for a full day shift uh, throughout the summer and it's been, been great and I've learned a lot, but um, we have someone who's gonna talk about that uh, product uh, soon, but the King's Bench Amicus project uh, is very similar one to that one. Um, so basically what we do uh, at that project is uh, through PBLA, uh, they kind of coordinate uh, with law firms to have volunteer lawyers come downtown uh, to assist self-represented litigants uh, in morning chambers. Um, so as a student volunteering, what that would kind of look like for you is, uh, it kind of depends on how busy they are. So when 
they are very busy, you'd kind of be helping with either one or two things. And that would be uh, one is triage. So when someone comes in to use the service, uh, asking them some some basic questions to to get a sense of what the legal issue is that they're they're coming to, to the courthouse with and uh, to know if you can even help them at all, because sometimes they might need to actually go somewhere else, whether that's uh, student legal assistance or uh, to the uh, Civil Claims Duty Council, as I mentioned. And then uh, if they are in the right place, you're helping them with intake. So getting them through uh, forms. Uh, disclosure forms, uh, doing conflict of interest checks with the lawyers to, to make sure that they can actually receive help that day. And uh, when it's not busy, it's a little bit more hands-on. You could actually be helping the volunteer lawyers do, do some legal research. Uh, you could be preparing some, some documents for them to use. Uh, you could actually be sitting in on chamber sessions, which is uh, very interesting and very insightful as well. Uh, and on top of that, uh, because there's volunteer lawyers that are there uh, every shift, it's actually a great networking opportunity too. Um, I'm, I'm going into the 2L recruit soon and looking for a job. And a lot of the lawyers that I've gone for coffees with to chat about their firms are people that I've actually met at that project. So uh, it's been really great for that as well. Um, and I'd say probably the coolest thing about the project is just the feeling that, um, you know, it's, it's very tangible how, how much help you're giving people. And, uh, you know, someone's small business could be uh, getting sued or have some, you know, be pursuing some lead, legal action. And that uh, could be the difference between their family or their, their kids having, having some money for the things they need or, or paying rent, right? And um, you're actually helping people um, in a very tangible way that, that makes a difference for them in, in their lives. And it's really cool to be able to do that, you know, even in your first uh, year of law school. So, um, yeah, that's that's about all I had to say for that project, and uh, I will pass it on to Megan. Great, thank you, Colton. So I'm Megan Goldie. I'm one of the project leads for the elementary school mock trial project. The other lead is Oria Kande. She couldn't be here tonight. Uh, so we're one of the projects that's very closely tied actually to McCarthy Tetro. Um, so we're, we're a lot of fun. <laughs> I joined PBSC because I came to this meeting just like you guys and I wanted to do every single project, but this is the one I put number one because it sounded like so much fun and it really is. Uh, we go through four weeks into elementary schools in Calgary. We're not sure of the schools quite yet. We're working on that, but we're hoping to focus in the Northeast this year. And we conduct some education about the tort of defamation, which I'm going to go out and say is the best tort. Uh, and then we teach the kids about it. And after that, on the last day of the program, they get to do a mock trial where they get to be the judge or they don't get to be the judge. That'll be one of you. <laughs> but they get to be the jury, the witnesses, the lawyers for a trial. Last year we did Harry Potter. I'm really excited that this year you're going to have a chance to help us change the theme and we will be changing to uh, Avengers Civil War. We had some problems with jury nullification on Harry Potter because you get a kid who just get in there and say no but he is a Death Eater. Anyway, <laughs> um, it's a really great project. You do get a little head start on learning about defamation. It helps the kids a lot uh, connect some of the civics stuff that they're learning. It's grade six students. And uh, you get to go help tour the McCarthy offices and the uh, courthouse we're planning for this year. Um, I can say all the PBSC stuff seems amazing and wonderful, but I'll just put a little word in for us. It's a good time. And I'm gonna pass it over to Emily. Hello, can you hear me okay? Okay, sounds good. Um, so hello everyone, my name is Emily. I am one of the project leaders for the Hearsay Podcast. Um, and to give you a little inside scoop on what the Hearsay Podcast is, essentially um, anyone volunteering will create these monthly 30 minute podcast episodes um, that will be broadcasted at the university's student run radio station uh, that you can actually listen into at 90.9 .9 FM. It's called CJSW. Um, and essentially we give students a lot of creative freedom to kind of pick a legal uh, educational topic that you're interested in. Um, it could be anything. And then you kind of have free reign on the experts that you choose to invite for interviews. It could be professors, it could be judges, um, it could be 
you know, associates, it could be anyone really. Um, and they essentially speak to the legal aspects of your topic. Um, afterwards, uh, basically the students would then edit down the audio files that we have, and then you would submit them to the station to be aired and published uh, once every month, usually near the end, like the second or the last week of the month. And it will be forever published onto the website and download and streaming sites. So I think that's one of the cool aspects of um, the Hearsay podcast is that you are essentially putting in your creative, um, you know, blood, sweat and tears into these 30 minute podcast episodes and they will be forever on the internet. So um, I think it's something that's really cool for you to kind of look back at and show to everyone because it's something tangent that you work towards uh, for the year that you're volunteering. Uh, I originally joined uh, PBSC essentially just kind of uh, echoing what everyone else is to help everyone. And I think the Hearsay podcast is a really interesting way to do it because you're reaching people through like a like a technological output. People can listen to it. People can um, email us and ask questions. And it's just a really interesting and different way to present your legal uh, education, essentially. But yeah, I will pass it on to Celine. Hi everyone, I'm Celine. I'm the project leader for the Civil Claims Duty Council, um, the C or CCDC for short. Um, Civil Claims Duty Council is a counter on the 15th floor of the courthouse that helps uh, self-represented litigants with free 30-minute sessions. The lawyer on duty will help uh, self reps with like forms um, and like the whole pr process of their claim. And um, what we do uh, working with the Civil Claims Duty Council is uh, much like the amicus and what Colton was saying before, we triage clients coming in. Uh, first, we find out, you know, why are they here? And um, it's been a really great experience to learn about the different kinds of claims people can have because civil claims is such a broad term. It could be anything from uh, the snowplow running down someone's fence to someone's personal business, um, having issues like with unpaid invoices and getting bullied by larger companies, all kinds of things like that. Um, and again, yeah, I joined Civil Claims Duty Council because I wanted to help people, but also because I wanted to be closer to the courthouse. Um, I'm interested in learning more about how does a, a file move from A to Z through the court system. Um, and so you're getting introduced to all kinds of terminologies and forms and you kind of learn tidbits here and there and it starts to kind of fill in this picture and I think that it's been really great for that um, and then it's also been really great for helping people not just on the project but even in my personal life I've referred someone like hey have you heard about this and they booked a, thir a 30 minute appointment online or, um, you know, another friend was helping someone go through the courthouse and I was able to refer them like, oh, here's a family counter on this floor or here's a counter on that floor. So I can help people even outside of the project, which is super rewarding. Um, and again, like Colton said, you know, sometimes in between clients, you have a time to chat with the volunteering lawyer. And that's also super great to learn more about their practice and firm culture and all those kinds of things that you're gonna be so hungry to learn about. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I think that pretty much um, captures the CCDC project. I'm very much looking forward to any of you who wanna work on the project. I'm looking forward to meeting with you. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions at all. And now I'll pass the mic back to Nana. Thank you very much, Andy, Tristan, Colton, Megan, Emily, and Celine for highlighting your projects and experiences. And to our incoming 1Ls, we encourage you, we strongly encourage you to apply for our projects. Applications will open August 15th to September 15th at 5 p.m. And if you apply before August 30th, you'll have a chance to win one of two $75 Shark Cut Roast House gift cards. And if you apply before September 8th, you have a chance to win one of two $100 bookstore gift cards. 
courtesy of Doug Yoshida, managing partner at McCarthy Tetchvolt. Application forms will be made available via email, our website, and our social media pages, so look out for those. And additionally, we'll be posting descriptions of our projects on our social media account. So follow us on Instagram at PBSC underscore UCalgary, on Facebook at PBSC UCalgary, LinkedIn at PBSC UCalgary, or Twitter at PBSC Calgary. We will also be recruiting 1L representatives for the upcoming year, and those applications will open September 1st. I want to express my gratitude once again to our guests, Riley, Andy, Tristan, Colton, Megan, Emily, and Celine, and a warm welcome to all of you incoming 1L students who joined us tonight. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask, or you can email us at probonos at ucalgary.ca. I will enter all those into the chat, but I will make myself available for questions right now if anyone has any questions for us. <laughs> 